Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News, also DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. The Kell Brook Carson Jones fight just ended. Officially, it's Kell Brook by knockout. Here's what I think you need to know as you're watching replays of this fight. First, the stoppage is hopelessly premature. With all due respect to the play by play guys on Sky Sports, this stoppage was ridiculous. The one thing we know about Carson Jones is that he's a survivor. His best chance of winning this fight is by winning it through a war of attrition. It's by being the last man standing. We know Kell Brook's faster. We know Kell Brook hits harder. We know Kell Brook is talented. The question is whether Kell Brook can keep Carson Jones off of him for all 10 rounds. Right, so here you have a fight where periodically Carson Jones gets hurt, and I mean badly hurt. Right? He was more hurt earlier in the fight. He actually takes a knee in one of the early rounds. He had been knocked down. Let's fast forward to the last round. This is a typical case of a referee getting too excited. First of all, they rule a knockdown in the last round that, as best I can tell, wasn't a knockdown. In fact, Carson Jones is talking to the referee saying, What's going on here? Why are you stopping you know, the action? Right? The referee acted as if Carson Jones had been knocked down. You know when you fight Kell Brook. Kell Brook's going to hit you with clean shots. You know they're going to be hard. You know there are going to be times where you're dazed. But this is boxing. That's to be expected. Don't stop the action when the action is fluid. When one guy hasn't been knocked down. Now, I have yet to see a replay where Carson Jones's glove hit the canvas. I doubt it did. Also, keep in mind, too, Carson Jones is trying to roll with punches. So, yes, as he's getting hit, he's going to be rolling a bit awkwardly. But it's clear that he has his faculties about it. Well, the fight continues. Kell Brook comes over, and what do guys with hand speed do? Kell Brook flashes hand speed. Catches Jones a few times, but understand Jones is completely lucid. He's trying to defend himself. He's still in the fight. He knows exactly where he is. He knows exactly what he's doing. And let's get real. He's not staggering around the ring. The referee inexplicably jumps between the two guys and waves off the action. It's unfortunate because the questions about Kell Brook still remain. Johnny Nelson on the telecast just perhaps a round before gave a commentary and I thought Nelson was right on the money. He said in this fight Kell Brook has hurt Carson Jones several times. The question is whether Kell Brook can take the next step and stop him. This referee denied Kell Brook that opportunity. Also, we know from the earlier fight, when's Kell Brook most vulnerable? It's in these later rounds. Right? Carson Jones was aggressive. He was trying to push the action. I'm positive that the Carson Jones game plan was to try to end the fight in the later rounds. Now, I'm not saying Carson Jones would be able to do so, but what I am going to say is that this stoppage was completely unjustified. I understand the guys on Sky Sports, the play-by-play -play guy, said, oh, the referee had no choice. What fight were they watching? Right to the people watching the Sky TV telecast. I'll tell you what, you leave your impressions here on this video as to whether or not you thought, while Carson Jones certainly was on the receiving end of a lot of punishment, tell me if you thought the fight should have been stopped when it was stopped. Especially when the first fight featured a furious comeback by Carson Jones, right? And when the question about Kell Brook is whether he has the survival skills toward the end of the fight. So I thought the stoppage was premature. Let me say this about Kell Brook. 
at the start of fights when the fights operating at a level in other words when everyone's fully rested when everyone is lucid before anyone has been hit hard upside the mouth Kelbrook is as good as anyone is at 147 pounds and that includes Floyd Mayweather that includes Devin Alexander that includes Timothy Bradley Kel Brook is one of the better punchers in boxing. I'm just not talking about punching power. I'm talking about the shortness of his punches. Everything is very short. Even his punches to the body. There's no loop on his punches. Carson Jones starts the fight with his hands up like this. Kel Brook's able to hit him right here with a jab. Right split the guard. Then right after hitting him with the jab, He's able to come back with a power right hand right in the same spot. Not a lot of fighters can split a crevice with power punches, and there's power behind it. When Carson Jones moves his hand over to protect his face, Cal Brook is able to, again, very short right hand, and his right hand is the story of the fight. He's able to shoot a right hand and hit Carson Jones right on the side of the head. But there's no loop. There's no wildness, right? There is accuracy, right? And the punches are hard. Brooks such a well-balanced, gifted fighter that sometimes you don't even know the other fighters that badly hurt, right? When Carson Jones takes a knee, you know he's hurt. But it's interesting how even a macho guy like Carson Jones understood that Kel Brook was on the verge of stopping him. This was early in the fight, like the second round, right? And Kel Brook can just lean forward and hit you with devastating left hands to the body. And again, there's no loop on it. He has built-in leverage, and he's very fast. So again, when he's fully rested, he can compete with anybody. But you and I know, Fights only last at the A level for a few rounds, right? Where fights get interesting is when they hit the B level, when guys are a little bit tired, when that 99 mile an hour fastball drops to 94 miles an hour, right? When you don't have 100% stamina and the other guy is making it a war of attrition. When that action that early in the fight is in the middle of the ring, right? You have the energy, you have the pop, you have the volume. It's when that action moves to the side of the ring. When guys start getting tired and puffy, that's when you figure out who has staying power. Now questions exist on Cal Brook's staying power after the last Carson Jones fight, the one before this one, right? The first one, right? questions arose because Kel Brook, quite frankly, might not have great survival skills. In other words, when he gets tired, he's not a guy who really knows how to clinch and hold you, right? He's not a guy who looks like he knows how to change the pace of a fight. In other words, early on, he's bouncing around outside prepping you with very hard, very straight punches. But when he gets a little tired and you start bullying him, right, and the tide shifts in your direction, other than trying to outpunch you, it's unclear whether Kelbrook knows exactly how to survive against you, right? Bernard Hopkins is a fighter who knows all the tricks of the trade, right? We've seen fights where Bernard Hopkins is pacing himself, right? The other guy starts to get hot. Bernard Hopkins knows how to defuse that situation, right? Hopkins knows how to grab. Hopkins knows how to turn. Hopkins knows how to block certain shots and back away and slow down the action, how to actually have slow rounds. There's a question here on whether Kel Brook knows how to have slow rounds. I have no doubt for the first three rounds of a fight he can compete with anyone. He's very gifted. The question is the last three rounds, right? They're fighters who swear by him. Demarcus Corley sparred with Kel Brook. He believes Kel Brook 
can compete with anybody, right? Kell Brook certainly has the punching power and the hand speed to do just that. The question, though, is whether he has the ring savvy, right? And whether he has the survival skills and stamina, right? Those are, those are open questions because Kell Brook is a guy who typically jumps out in front of you. In a sense, he's like the Steve Young, if you're an NFL player, uh, fan, he's like the Steve Young of boxing, right? You know, Steve Young could destroy you if his team jumped out to an early lead. The question was always whether Steve Young in the fourth quarter could come back and actually carry his team past you. That's the question with Kell Brook, unfortunately. This referee denied us the ninth and tenth rounds. Right? It's it's stunning. You know, uh, Carson Jones, I'm sure, one second after this fight was stopped, could have given an eloquent interview. Right? He he hadn't even been knocked to the canvas, other than taking a knee, him taking a knee, early in the fight. There are no big injuries here. He's not bleeding profusely. There's no allegation that he can't see out of both eyes. Earlier in the fight, the referee walks over to his corner and we hear Carson Jones say to the referee, I'm okay. I'm fine. Right? And his corner's talking to him. Right? He, he looks 100% lucid. So, at the end of the fight, yes, he's stunned a little bit. But let's get real. That's not enough to stop the fight. And I know there's a you know, scene here with Kell Brook where he looks like he's throwing crisp punches and of course, I'm sure in the ring, the referee must be impressed by, you know, just how flush he's able to hit his opponent. But no matter how flush it looks, unless the opponent is out on his feet, the fight should not be stopped. So Kell Brook is certainly a guy to watch. My question isn't him against Floyd Mayweather the first three rounds. I know he can hold his own. My question is what happens when it gets over to the side of the brain, right? Then what happens? You know, is he able to lean on the ropes and bob and weave and defend himself like Mayweather is? You know, what happens if Mayweather starts blocking his shots and starts countering him? What's Kell Brook going to do? I don't think we... No. Also, Kell Brook on the inside, open question, right? Because Kell Brook's hand speed and accuracy is such that he hasn't had to fight on the inside that much. Let me also say this too. Kell Brook has a nice jab, but it's not the kind of jab, let's say a Vladimir Klitschko jab, that keeps an opponent away from him for all 10 or 12 rounds, right? We know that from the first Carson Jones fight. Right? Where Carson Jones is up on him in the later rounds. Right? When that jab starts to fail, does Kell Brook have enough Bernard Hopkins or James Tony in him or Floyd Mayweather in him to then, as the fight gets out of the A level and hits the B level, both guys are tired or hits the C level. Both guys are very tired or hits the D level. Both guys are tired and sloppy. Does Kell Brook know how to hang when he's not 100%? As I see it, the jury's still out on that. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.